Our first book is by Ian McKinley and about his career in rugby. Tom, tell us all about Second Sight. Um, brilliant book, a uh, very striking story. You know, a young man who was going through St. Columbus College, which is not a college that normally produces many famous rugby players. So people have kind of noticed him because of that. But very early on in the story, he's a horrific eye injury. And I really can't you know, exaggerate how bad an injury this is. The descriptions are just, oh God, stomach turning. It doesn't look like he'll keep the eye at one point. And four months later, he's back in training, which I just found incredible. Now, he's very restricted sight in the eye, but he's getting by. And that in itself is a brilliant story. But thereafter, a few months after that, he loses the sight in the eye. It goes away, despite everything. And he's completely devastated, aged about 21, and having dedicated his entire life to rugby, getting up at 6 a.m. to go training, all that kind of really, you know, strong stuff. So he goes to Italy and he's, he's teaching and, and coaching over there, finding a whole new life for himself. But starts to get the idea that, um, not a happy man either, starts to get the idea that if he had protective goggles or something, would he be able to continue to play? It's his brother who puts this suggestion to him. So in, in a, a, an engineering school in Dublin, they start trying to develop this as a prototype and see what it work. And I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> yeah. But it turns into the most amazing story, the most amazing story. And it's almost a fairy tale at times, but it's a story that's based on really great determination, great strength, and I have to say an amazing family. From his dad to his mum to his brother, his sister, they all, they all help really, they give concrete help. You know, they come out and help him to find people, to find doctors, to talk about things. As he's trying to then get the goggles accepted in the sport, they're helping him with that. They're really using their connections. They're really, I came away thinking, that's a brilliant family, you know. Yeah. If I had a family like that, you think it could take on the world. Yeah, I so, read this myself, and that's yeah. especially at this time when you realise how important yeah. your family are. And I know nothing about rugby, but I find his honesty and and his bravery truly inspiring. Yeah, I don't know an awful lot about rugby either, uh, but I will say one thing: is the thing I just can't get over. It, it seems to be everybody in rugby. You have to shorten the name of your friends and family to something kind of catchy. So. <laughs> Uh, Sexton obviously is Sexto. Yeah. Brian Driscoll is Drico. I just know there's a position called a hooker. And yeah, like, well, you know. his girlfriend, <laughs> Cordelia, is quickly shortened to cords, you know, which just, I just, I just find, where does this come from? You know, What, what would yours, Tomo, be? Very Brian Driscoll, you know, <laughs> surfing cords, man, we're going. But do you think but, his retirement is what has brought on the writing of this book? I think so. It's given him the time. And I think to put this story out there and to, you know, for other people who may have similar issues with sight to think I can still do it. He has very big issues with field of depth perception of stuff. And he's still able to kick a ball between two posts yeah. from halfway down the pitch. It's you know? amazing. So, wow. But I suppose that's the tale of um, any young person who's getting into sports and is already making it their life choice. Yeah. Their career, yeah. you know, and there's so many young people who will never get there. No. Now, luckily, he was one of those yeah. people who was aimed, you know, he, he was on that journey. Another thing I've noticed, because uh, I read an awful lot of music books, and when you read sports books, it, it seems that the family supports for people in sports are enormous. And in music books, it seems to be the complete opposite. I can, I can verify that because, you know, in the arts, my mother's dying wish was, could I not get a normal job? Exactly. You know? I, I, a friend of mine said, he <laughs> told us that he wanted to be an actor and his, his dad took his dinner off him and said, well, get, <laughs> get used to being hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I get that. You know, his, yeah. all his family support him. Yeah, and in music, it's very often the dysfunctional family. It's very often where somebody is trying to find their own identity and is going into the world already slightly damaged with very little support around them. And then music, I think, can make that worse. But it seems in sports, they have strong supports around them. And when they have difficulties, they have even more support. So you really would have to contrast the two worlds. I'm still in music, though. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going to put that message out to my family. Yeah. Biggest support. Yeah. This is the gold standard <laughs> families. <laughs>